how you went traveling as well. So, so was this pro- you went traveling prior to joining Casa Aid? I assume. Yeah, no, I did. So I've, I'm, you know, what I'm, I feel very blessed and fortunate, especially coming, um, you know, you know, similar to a lot of uh, a lot of Punjabis and Sikhs in the UK. You know, um, parents that come from India. Uh, but long story short, from working on a working class background, uh, but I, I had I had the ability basically to over the last ten years to travel two of those years. So once mm-hmm. straight after university, I spent a year um, away, and then also uh, as part of um, uh, our wedding and, and Jasper and I's honey- honeymoon, I spent a year mm-hmm. away. So the first the first year away was back nearly ten years ago now, two thousand and two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten. Um, mm-hmm. And I spent a lot of time in Southeast Asia, um, in cheap, South right? America as well. Cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, oh, I, that's that, why. That's what, yeah, that's where it's also very cheap, right? It's a very, 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 very great way to live in terms of um, financial arbitrage. Bang for buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's when I was um, in Thailand and training in Muay Thai as well. So it was a it was a very nice. um, formative time in my life, straight out of university. Um, and being able to travel the world in that way, I think that's what really gave me the 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 bug to travel in one way and explore. Yeah. And traveling really opened my perspective to yeah. many different ways of life. You know, I grew up as that Slough boy. Went to went to you know went to yeah. school locally. Everyone in my most Punjabi most, school, most, yeah, Punjabi <laughs> school. Most people in my school were you know Indian. Um, yeah. yeah. Or brown, and then it's saying yeah. the school. It's only until I went to university. I went to Sawas, the School of Oriental African Studies. When my worldview changed, it broadened because all of a sudden, yeah. the majority of students are international. It's very, very small, and yeah. you know, you got. I was living next door to someone from Korea, South Korea, and you know, learning all about their cuisine. And next, someone next, someone next to me, in Japan, from China, and, you know, different parts of Africa. And you start to just you know, mm. take all this in different ways of living, different mindsets, different food, and then traveling. Is actually, you know, being in that environment. That on yeah. steroids, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, that changed my worldview massively for the better, I think, uh, and that's mm. part of, I guess, the drive to work with Cars to Aid as well. I think, you know, there's a personal piece of just seeing parts of the world that are unseen and that kind of explorer archetype. You know, going back to the even my name and Indiana Jones and what, <laughs> whether that's a personal piece or not. But I think there's a there's a, there's a piece around traveling the world and it's benefited me hugely, um, and um, I take great value in that as well from the lessons uh, and experiences that I've gone through. Um, um, in terms of being able to see see and experience different cultures and different parts of the world. Yeah, I mean, I had a similar feeling where as soon as I got to Southeast Asia and you meet all these people from all walks of life and you're like, oh man, like the world is, the world that I thought existed is not a thing. Tiny. Everything Tiny. is so Tiny. different. It's so right? small. You meet barely any British people, you meet Australians, people from New Zealand, people from people from uh, across Europe, people from America, you're like, whoa, why are you here? And a lot of them say because it's cheap, but they also said because yeah. they, they, they just wanted to take time out from work and, and go and do a, go and embark on a bit of a journey on their own, which is, I, th- I think it should be a compulsory thing that everyone does after, after uni or school because it this broadens your horizons. Thing, make it mandatory, man. When I have kids, I, I was thinking about this the other day and I was like... The whole gap year thing, though, hang on, hang on. The gap year oh. thing, it's a very posh thing. Where like people think, oh, you're rich, you can go on a gap year. But people are like, I'm broke, I can't afford no fucking gap year. I gotta go and work now. I gotta help contribute to bills at home now. So mm. maybe it should be like some kind of I don't know government focused shit or something, or just like some kind of sponsorship where if you finish uni, you should go and have that as an incentive afterwards. I was I don't thinking, know. I was thinking pre uni gap year, but yeah, you could yeah. do post uni. I'm thinking like when I was, I did my A levels. It was all about again, brown Punjabi kid. You're gonna be a doctor. Bang 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 bang. Right. And now I look at life and, you know, I speak to a lot of coaches, a lot of doctors now. And it's like, well, why are you in such a rush, man, to get to, like, say, become a consultant? You're going to be there yeah. 30, 40 yeah. years. You're going to be bored out of your head. Go and have some experience, man. You want to go to Australia, New Zealand, practice some medicine? Do it. And then when you come back to the UK, your skill set is like different level. And yeah. that's the experience. I, I know we're going to come on to this topic later in, in today about financial literacy. When I got exposed to entrepreneurship as a, like, again, somebody like my family is all academic. I'm a doctor. All I do is spend my time reading medical books. When I go into this, like personal development, this, 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 I was like, wow, there's a whole new world, whole new Sangat. Yeah. I get to hang around with all these different cool people now. But what it's meant for my practice is that it's just, you know, fixing the printer, man. It comes back to that. Me, it's how can I fix the printer? Everyone else just wants to moan about the printer doesn't work. That's, that's a simple Ooh, thing. That's a good analogy. Go on, I should put that on a t-shirt for you, mate. There we go. There you go. There you go, man. 
the simple i mean it's just it's a simple coaching question but it's just not not i can't do it how can i do it and the simple reframe in your mind allows you to approach so many things in life and just start thinking you know it's just about problem solving and having what i've yeah actually somebody who's asking me this somebody asked me on a day-to-day on a practical level how do you improve your game right i said you know focus on having more meaningful interesting conversations that's been the last five years for me upping my game is getting in the room and being with minds who broaden my perspective. You've obviously done that in different traveling uh, and I share your sentiment there. I think it's absolutely awesome to understand the way people live and what they value and how that then gets me to reflect on what I value and why I value and questioning. That introspection has led me then to really sharpen and understand who I am, what's important to me and why and just leave all this other shit on the side, man. All the stuff we just kind of grow up in, this bubble we grew up in. You know what? I completely agree. To me, that speaks, you know, hugely around sangat, right? You are, you know, you know, the product of the sangat that you you keep and and around. And 